In this video, I use this stencil to create this skull artwork. Let's get into it right now. So adding some transparent black into the airbrush. I want to position this stencil and I'm just going to spray lightly through it. Now I'm not worried about these edges here being cut off. I'm just going to put my finger in the center of the template and I'm just lightly dusting over that entire template. What this will do is it will transfer the design onto the canvas for me. And then I can render freehand from there. If you are just starting out with the airbrush, you may want to use the template more, meaning that you know, you'll go back to this as you progress through the stages of rendering. So you can see now that all of those skulls have been marked in. Now I can start to add some shading to it using a transparent black. The intensity is pretty much black, just like using a regular black, except I've added in the transparent base and I've mixed everything with a bit of reducer. And on this airbrush, it has the MAC valve. So what I'm gonna do is lower that pressure a little bit coming out of the front of the brush by winding that MAC valve in. And that's gonna allow me to get a little bit finer detail. You might need to add more reducer to your paint to allow it to flow through at such a lower PSI. I'm gonna go ahead now and detail the skulls. Now I'll test to see how dark it is and that's pretty good. That's what we want. Now, I'm going with this darker mix straight away because I want more contrast in this piece because I'm gonna add a candy in at the end. So I'm gonna render this just with this black and then hit it with the candy. So again, starting in the eye sockets, the nostrils, I'm not just painting them in black as you can see. I'm still leaving some shading in there to create some more depth. But you can go a little bit darker if you are going to add the candy on top. If you're not confident with using a darker tone straight away, then you could have continued with that mid-tone just for practice. It's not really going to show up once I candy it as much, but at least it'll give you a little bit of practice and, and you get to warm up with the airbrush before adding that candy. Still going to add some shading in as well. Again, you can go darker because we're going to add that candy. So generally what the candy does, it'll suck out some of the detail. I'm testing out a water-based candy, so it'll be interesting to see if it's got similar sort of properties to a urethane candy where when you're using those dyes, it really does eliminate a lot of your detail and hence why you have to airbrush darker but um, we'll find out later in this video. Again, if you wanna pick out any of the areas using the template, just grab it again and you can get a nice sharp edge if you want that sort of contrast like so. I might have this part of the other skull coming across that part of the jaw so you can mix it up. So just use your template as a guide. And if you're new to airbrushing and you want to learn how to use it properly, then you can definitely check out our new online airbrushing course, airbrushasylum.thinkific.com. All the info will be there. 
and that will definitely help you out to become better with the airbrush. So just adding more and more detail but not overdoing it. And you can see it's a lot quicker if you just use that black straight away but again just a, a warning it is a lot harder to control even though I'm not using straight black it's pretty close to but it's got that uh, transparent base in there just to make it a bit more forgiving Again, because I want more contrast in this piece, I'm going to go back and just utilize that template. You're going to get those real defined sharp edges, which is what I'm looking for. You're going to struggle to get that sharp using just freehand, and that's why I enjoy using both a template as well as freehand. As you can see, the template's just to give me that marking out, saves me drawing it, and then I'm essentially just working freehand from there. This one I'm utilizing the template more because I want that contrast. So you can see I'm varying my height, my speed, and the amount of paint flow that I'm applying. So when I'm up close like this, it's less paint. Or if I pull back more, then I've got to move faster to compensate for it. These skulls are a very stylized skull. which gives you a little bit more freedom. We're not doing photorealism here. So just have fun with it. If you make a mistake, you can always turn it into a crack or a divot in the bone. This guy here is missing a few teeth, so we'll just put them in. Leave a few gaps. Also for your reference, I'll pop a few links in the description below to other skull tutorial videos that you can check out. As well as some playlists to help you with beginner techniques. And you'll also find links to products used in this video down there as well so be sure to check it out once you finish watching the video We're rendering a bit of the bone Blend out some of the shading as well around. Might even bring in some texture just around these edges to fill them in. I'll render these skulls in first just to see how it's looking.
bit of a crack in there so you can easily add them in. Just like I'm doing here, add your little style into this. You know, use the template as just a basic guide to get you started and then you can render these skulls any which way you like. I might pop an eyeball in this one just for the sake of it. So adding in a bit more shading because these guys are sitting on top of this skull. So decide where your light source is going to be coming from and run with that. See, I'm just kind of sketching with the airbrush. Suggesting where I want to go with a shadow or a line or a darker shade. And then working off that. So I'm going to leave the pentagram out. You can choose to airbrush it in if you like. Knock out some of those teeth. You can see I've left a bit of a gap here as well. Taking off this little piece here on the jaw. I'll come back in at the end, check over everything and probably darken off a few more spots. Again, not completely solid in those eye sockets. It's almost like a graduated tone, leaving some depth to make it appear as though they're more three-dimensional. If you just paint them solid black, then it'll just look flat. So you want to avoid doing that. Teeth are always the hardest thing when airbrushing skulls. So again, if you need to grab that template, use that to your advantage. You can also use a cotton bud. They work really well just to get the outline. A little bit more texture, freehand. So you notice how I pull out all of the detail and then I dust back over it just to knock things back so effectively pushing him into the background, creating that shadow.
As a final skull, we're going to just grab this for a second and just suggest a bit of that in the teeth. A little bit more. So we've got that in there now. May as well do that first. Add a few cracks in this one. Just to add a little bit more texture and detail to it. Okay, so now taking the whole canvas into account, I'm going to just darken off a few areas and then add a little bit of a background and then I'll add the candy over the top. Okay, so just to add in a little bit of texture, what I want to do first, so I'm going to drip some paint using a brush. This is the original first mid-tone that I used. And I'm gonna put this everywhere, just to add a little bit of this sort of drippy texture around. Just catch it. taking a look at what it looks like now with the rendering finished and some of that drippy paint. So before I candy it, I'm just gonna add one white highlight. I'm not gonna go over the entire skulls this time. I'm gonna leave them as is, just to show you what it looks like when the candy goes over skulls that are just rendered with the black. So I just want to hit a highlight in the eye of this skull. I'm just going to do a dot white highlight, like so, and then brighten up the eyeball a little bit as well. And leave it at that. Applying the blue candy, spraying it a 50-50 overlap to get even coverage. That's about four coats so far. I'm just going to keep coating on the top so you can really notice the difference. So you can keep going over it and it's just going to get darker and darker. But before I finish off the whole canvas, let's take a look at that now. You can see the difference. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm testing a new candy. This is a water-based candy. You can definitely find similar candies like this. Uh, for instance, Createx Candy 2.0. I'll link that up in the description. They have a candy which works perfectly just like a true candy does, and that's water-based as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue and bring that candy down over the entire artwork. can see what I mean about how it knocks out a lot of the detail. So just continue coating until you're happy. Just a few more coats right over the whole lot. 
see it's gradually going darker. I've added some reducer into this mix as well. So the whole candied canvas. You can see how much that's changed the skulls. So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.